In this lesson, we're going to add quests to the locations. We're going to give quests to the player when they move to a location that has a quest. And we're going to display the player's quest on the screen in the UI. The changes we will do in this lesson will be very similar to what we did when we added the inventory to the player class. So let's open up Visual Studio. And the first file we'll work with is the location class. We're going to add a new property here. The scope of the property is going to be public. The data type is a list of quest objects because we want to have the ability to add multiple quests at a location. The property name is quests available here. We have the standard get and set. And then we have this equals new list quest with open parenthesis and close parenthesis. So that will initialize this property with an empty list to start out with. This way we don't need to create a constructor and initialize the quest available here property inside the constructor. Also notice that we have to have the using system.collections.generic because we have this list data type. Now that we have a place to store the quests that are at a location, let's go into the world factory class and put a quest into one of the locations. The quest we created in, in the last lesson was for the herbalist hut. So let's find the location down here where we add the herbalist hut to the locations in the world. And then we'll add this new line here where we say new world location at zero one, which will get us the herbalist hut location. And this actually returns a location object. So we can start using properties on that object. In this case, we're going to use the dot quests available here, and we're going to use dot add to add the quest number one from the quest factory. This works the same as if we had created a variable to hold this location and done something like location herbalist hut hh equals new world dot location at zero one, which would have got the location. And then we could have said hh dot quest available here dot add and then get the quest from the quest factory. But this just lets us do it in one line without creating a temporary variable. I'm going to remove those two lines and we'll just use the one here on 48 for the code that we actually run. Next, we can start to get ready to add the quest to the player object, but we're going to need to create a, an intermediate class to hold that quest because we not only care about the quest that the player has, but we care whether the quest is completed or not. So kind of like with the inventory, when we created the item quantity class that had the item ID and the quantity, we're going to create a quest status class. This will be a new class in the engine project in the models folder, and we're going to name it queststatus.cs. And it's a very simple class. We just have the property here called player quest, which is going to hold the quest. And we have a Boolean property called is completed. And then we have a constructor here so we can pass in the quest. And we're not passing in the is completed because when we create a new quest status object, it's always going to be false. When we give the player the quest, it's not completed yet. So we can just say, is completed equals false here, and we don't need to pass it in as a parameter. Once the player does complete the quest, then we can always just set the is completed property to true on the quest status object that they have in their quest list. Now we're ready to modify the player class, and we're going to add a new observable collection of quest status objects and we'll name that property quests. And then down here in the player constructor, we'll say quest equals new observable collection quest status. So now when the player moves to a location, we'll check to see if it has any quest. Then we'll check to see if the player does not have the quest from that location yet. 
any quest that the player does not have will add into this new quest property on the player object. And we'll do all that inside the game session.cs class. The way we're going to manage giving quests to the player is when they move to the location, the current location property inside the game session is going to be set to the new location. So here in the current location property setter, I've added a new function call for give player quest at location. This is a new function that we're going to create and this will give the player the quest. And if we scroll down to look at that function, it's going to look at each quest inside the current locations quest available here, that new property we added on the location object. Anything it finds in that list, it's going to create a quest variable and the data type is quest. Then we're going to take that quest variable and say if the current player does not have that quest, so we're going to say look at the current player, look in their quest list property, and check to see if any of the quest status objects inside that quest property, if any of them have a player quest ID that matches the quest ID for the quest at the location we're looking at. If they don't, that's what we've got this exclamation point for the, the not. So if none of their quests match the same ID as the quest at the location, then we're going to add that quest to the player's quests. And we do that by creating the new quest status object with the quest at the location. This uses link. So we need to also include in the game session class this using system.link. That lets us use the any function here, which lets us compare all the objects in the quest list property. So now when the player moves to their new location and the current location property gets changed, the function runs and any quests that are at the location that the player does not already have in their quests, we're going to give the quest to the player. Now we just need to display this on the UI. And we're going to do this just like we did with the inventory. So in the WPF UI project, we'll open up mainwindow.xaml and scroll down until we find the tab control where we created the tab item for inventory. And we're going to create a new tab item that's inside the tab control. So you see here's our opening tag for tab control and here's our closing tab control tag. And this new tab item, the header is going to say quest. The data grids item source for all the rows is going to be the current player and the quest property. And the two columns we're going to display are the name, and that's going to be the player quest dot name, and one called done, and that's the is completed. The binding for the name might look a little strange because we're binding to a property of a property of an object, but the way this works is the current player is within the game session, that's a property, and its data type is player. The player object has a property called quests, which is a list of the new quest status objects that we just created. The quest status object has a property player quest, and its data type is quest. And if we go and look at the quest class, it has a property name. So we're binding to the player quest property on the quest object, and we're displaying the name of the player quest object. Now that we have all the pieces in place, let's run the game. And if we look down in the tab control in the lower left corner, we see we have the inventory tab item and we have the new quest one that we just added. 
we don't have any quests for the player yet, but if we move north, since we moved to the Herbalist Hut location and it had a quest, and the player did not already have the quest, then the new function in the game session class gave the quest to the player, and when they did that, because the player's quests property is an observable collection, that automatically updated the UI here. So now we can give the player quests. That's it for this lesson. If you have any questions, I'll have a link to the support page in the description, which will also have the source code. You can leave a question on the support page or below the video, and I'll answer it as soon as possible.